Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another hobby tip video. This time we're going to be looking at another aspect of my terracotta army. The bronze statues, the uh, horses that they ride. Um, the video will be for made with using these models but uh, it can be applied to any kind of bronze statue you use. It doesn't have to be the animated kind that are living and riding around in the world. Um, so we're gonna take a look at the paints, some of the um, inspiration art, um, real world photos really. Um, and then a quick quick tutorial on how to achieve this this kind of look for bronze statues. So first the colors we'll have a look. The metal colors by Vallejo. These are really good metal colors. I use the copper one and the pale burnt metal. Um, you can use any metal color you want for this look, really. I like these ones because they are very shiny, but I mean, this is not very shiny, so we're gonna cover it with other stuff anyway. So you can use any metal color you want, really. You can go for a actual, an actual bronze color instead of this copper one, so it's not super important at all. I'm going to use a Black ink. I use the dollar rounded one. You can use any any you like. I like this one because it does a very high pigmentation. Because of that we're using uh, it quite sparsely. If you use another white white one, want to increase increase the ratio of it a bit. Also using a green ink, black green ink more specifically from Game Ink line of Vallejo. Again, you can use any green ink you want. Uh, I use a dark one uh, for all of this one uh, for one step you mix it with the black ink to get it even darker but um, uh, you can always just mix in a little bit of dark for uh, all the steps that are used in case you want to darken it a bit if you have a brighter green ink. And the last color I'm using is the uh, Burdigree Lace from Modern Color Vallejo. And this one I'm not sure about the alternatives. Uh, I'm sh I know that Games Workshop makes a verdigree color as well. And I'm sure it's per perfectly fine. I use this one. I like it. Um, but you can try others and uh, see how it goes. But I like I like this one. So taking a look at the photos, real world inspiration. We have a actual, an actual horse here, a bronze statue of a horse. You can see that it's a lot of texture. This one is fairly uniform in the uh, verdigree color. You can see quite a bit of the bronze shining through, especially in the uh, raised areas. So the verdigree is collecting in the crevices and stuff like that. Here we have a more close up picture, photo of a bronze statue. You can see that there's a lot of darkness in it, some dark patches. Often on the underside, sort of exaggerating a, a um, bit of a um, cenital look. So it's hard to tell from the picture, but the uh, art underneath here, whatever it's, it's a parchment he's holding, looks a bit darker than can just be the light, but it's also fairly possible that it's, um, the, the vertigo itself is darker in those areas. Here we can see another statue. Uh, with quite a lot of bronze shining through and a lot of dark patches again. Um, it's a lot of variation. You can compare the colors of these different pictures and see that they're not exactly the same. And another statue, you can see a bit of streaking uh, where the vertigo has run down flat surfaces of the statue. And again, some very dark patches. Uh, and on this one, very little of the bronze color shining through. So, all in all, of some strong variations. We have a fairly obvious cenothal uh, highlighting uh, on many of these. And uh, we have a lot of texture on the, um, the surface of these types of uh, corrosions or vertebrae that we see on these statues. So, we're going to try and replicate that. Not shown in the video is the priming step. I primed the whole model first and then I varnished it with some satin varnish just for some extra protection because it's a, it's a white metal model 
so we want that extra layer of protection. But then we're going to take the copper color and we'll mix it with the black ink and with the green ink. This is going to be at a 3 to 1 to 3 ratio, so a lot more green copper than black because it's such a strong black. We're going to apply this with an airbrush on the statue. And we're going to focus on the underside because that's where this color will be most visible. Um, but you can cover the whole model as well, and you can do it with a brush as well, it's just faster with an airbrush. As you can see here, although this is sped up a bit. Next, we're going to apply as the pure copper color. This is done at a zenithal angle to create a basic highlight of the model. Um, so you can see here, about 45 degrees on the top. And we're doing this to create a basic highlight on the model that will be shown through a little bit. Uh, once we're done, but um, it's not super important, and you can do, do this with a brush fairly easily as well, just yes, dry brush it on. And the final step is to apply the copper, again mixed with some silver pale burnt metal here, uh, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio basically. And we're going to do that directly from the top, again creating this basic highlight that will be visible even underneath our third degree. Again, you can do this with a dry brush as well. Next, we will move on to the paint desk. And we'll take a new palette to mix the paint on, uh, new and clean. We don't want the color to pick up flakes from underneath. These are the colors we're using, the verdigris and the dark green ink. We will be mixing them together on the palette. We can vary the um, ratio a bit, but roughly five drops of uh, verdigris to one drop of the dark green ink because it's a very, very strong ink, as you can see. So I'm just going to take my brush here and take a little bit of the ink and mix it into verdigris to darken it. And then we're gonna add some extra water to make it more fluid as well. Something like this, you want to early use consistency. Then we're just gonna slather it under. Let's get it onto that, that statue. Uh, you don't have to be careful or, or anything. You want to get it into the cracks and all of that, but on the flat surfaces you can let it blob and pool and all kinds of stuff. It will just make it look more natural, really. Um, verdigris is quite random in nature, so you don't want to be too strict and regular with it. Let's get it under. And that's how it looks. And then we're gonna let it dry. And when fully dry, we're gonna take the pure ver verdigris paint. Again, add some water to it and pretty much just repeat, repeat the whole process. Get it on top of the previous coat. Don't have to cover every surface this time. Uh, you can be more random, more scribbling, um, and you can vary the consistency, the thickness, the application uh, quite a bit. Just create more, more interest in the texture in the, in the surface. This is really the last step. Um, with this technique you get a nice decent looking statue. And there we have it. That's how you paint bronze statue horses like this one. Or this one. And you can see on, on the character one here, uh, I have done a little bit of stripling as well with some black colors. So on the hind here, you can see there's some patches of black. I did that as an extra step on the character one, uh, just to make it stand out a little bit, um, or stand up, up to scrutiny a little bit more, perhaps. 
he just take a, a fairly large brush and just stab the miniature with some black dark ink. Again, water down. You don't want this too want it too stark, but it's fairly simple to do. So this is the kind of result you can get. Very simple. Looks very good. Um, very. It's a very iconic look. Like this looks like a bronze horse from a statue, um, and it's it's reads as that very easily. So it's a quite simple thing to paint, really. So I hope you found that useful, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.